-hmm. Welcome back to KT and Prime. Now, the battle to reduce deaths on Kenyan roads is now being taken to the manufacturers of public service vehicles. Now, the National Transport and Safety Authority and the Kenya Bureau of Standards are now implementing new safety standards in the design and materials used in the bodies of PSVs to ensure they withstand the impact in case of a crash. Familiar sight on Kenyan roads, since that trigger painful memories of road accidents that snuffed out Kenyan lives. The most recent accident being on the Nairobi Nakuru Highway that claimed a total of 20 lives in one night. According to the National Transport and Safety Authority, NTSA, the magnitude of such accidents could be greatly reduced only if the law on the standard body structure for PSVs was implemented following its gazettement in 2014. Kenas was mandated to be the body, to be the organization which will accredit the body which will carry out the conformity assessment of, body, uh, of buses as they are being constructed. Under the new regulations, body manufacturers will be required to redesign the PSV body structures to conform to the new standards that came into effect on Monday. This will see the tradition of a different body structure being welded to the chassis of another vehicle to enhance its looks come to an end. What we realize in the construction of a bus is that buses were being constructed without the proper steel, the proper welding, the proper designs, and one of the key issues which uh, we put in this standard is that all new buses which are going to be constructed under this standard, they have to have what we call anti-rolling bus. Moreover, specific carriers will be created to hinder PSVs from carrying cargo that is more than the specified weight. All this is to be done by certified body manufacturers. The design of that bus or the structure itself has to be approved by a registered engineer who will be held responsible if there is any failure on that structure. So far, only 13 body manufacturing companies of the 31 that applied have been verified, with a final list set to be released in a few weeks' time. Within the seven years, a vehicle, since the body has been, was constructed, we will be proposing that uh, that that vehicle need to be checked on the structural part of it. Sarah Mwangi, KTN News. Let's stay with Matas Transport now, and it is all systems go for phase 2A of the standard gauge railway. The National Land Commission, the Kenya Railways, and the contractor, China Road and Bridge Corporation, continue to evaluate the proposed route ahead of construction. However, conservationists insist the National Environmental Tribunal stop order must be followed. Orkaswangira now reports. From the west end of the Nairobi South Hub, where the Mombasa to Nairobi line ends, the standard gauge railway will turn southwestwards through the Nairobi National Park, west past Twala and Ongata Rongai towns, then cross Magadi Road and Gong Road at Mbulbul, and then descend into the Rift Valley through a tunnel located northwest of the Ngong Hills. But this route comes at a steep cost, massive land acquisition for the 120 kilometer stretch. The National Land Commission has offset a three day process to evaluate the land for the route. The route has been well aligned. Uh, we are not expecting many curves. There are some areas where we will need to, to add more land, but that one is, that's the reason why we are surveying. We want to assure the people in whose land the railway line will pass that they will not be left out in terms of compensation. Most of this land proceeding northwest to the proposed industrial parks at Maimayo and Suswa, crossing B3 at Dukamoja is community land. Pastoralists live here. Their nomadic pulse is the rhythm of this land, and many are dissatisfied with those they say are not from here, but are claiming to be landowners and occupiers with title deeds. Sisi 
itambulikana kwa ile ma share certificate ile tumedemarcation mashamba hata kama kesi iko kotini pesa ya shamba ikae mpaka wakati kesi itakapomalisika the Chinese construction workers have a tradition that women are not allowed to go near and within the tunnel at the time of construction. If they do, the process will not be complete. This is as far as I can go. Meanwhile, in Nairobi, conservationists are rallying behind the law instead to stop the progress of the Phase 2A route. The National Environmental Tribunal stop order issued earlier this year. You know for sure, Nairobi National Park is not the only route that the SGR can go through to reach Naivasha. Uh, we, they, they were complaining about the NEMA license, even that one we have. And uh, last year we held a very big ceremony there to ensure that we uh, we signed the agreement to allow the, uh, the railway line to pass through the park without interfering with the animals. Phase one is due for commissioning not later than the 1st of June. Its successor, the phase 2A, still has more hurdles to overcome. Dorcas Wangira, KTN News. Now, former Ethiopian Health Minister Dr. Tedros Adhanom is the new Director General elect of the World Health Organization. He is the first African to hold this top position. Dr. Sunia Nishtar from Pakistan was eliminated early on in the voting, leaving the tight race between Dr. Tedros and Dr. David Nabarro of the United Kingdom. The closed door voting session was by 80, 186 eligible member states. The nominees had each made a 15 minute submission prior to the voting session this afternoon in Geneva, Switzerland, where the 70th session of the World Health Assembly is currently underway. The new director general is in trace for, he's expected to guide the organization critical health issues of global concern like health emergencies. Dr. Tedros takes over the directorship from Dr. Margaret Chan, whose 10 year term ends on 30th June. Dr. Tedros is WHO's eighth director general. While WHO has never had a director general from Africa, no one should elect me because I am from Africa. But if you agree, there is a real value in electing a leader who has worked in one of the toughest health environments and transformed the health system. I will work with you and I'm really committed. I will listen to you. I was one of you, one, one of you and in your shoes, and I can understand you better. Right, Kerocha Brewery's Foundation Academy has seen its second batch of graduates re-enter the world of employment today after a mentorship program for entrepreneurs aimed at filling the gap of adequate practical knowledge and expertise. Caroline B. has the details. After importing hair for over 18 years, Jane Akoth, the CEO of Rapunzel and Posh Hair, got an idea to start her own manufacturing plant and process human hair and wigs. She was ready to open multiple branches of her salon across Nairobi. Her colleague, Kelvin Masharia, the CEO of Sunrise Tracking, a company that deals with high-tech security solutions, expanded his business with a new stall in Nakuru town. All this only happened after the two young entrepreneurs enrolled for the Keroche Foundation Mentorship Program. In the foundation, we are told to think differently. Don't think about your competitors in the market. This is when I, I, I figured out why can't I open a factory because I specialize in human hair extension and I'm award winner for human hair extension. The experience at the Academy of Masters was very amazing, meeting nine different uh, entrepreneurs whom we have really networked together and be able to see how best to uplift each other. Above all, uh, we also learned matters concerning uh, how best to be able like, to market ourselves, market our products. And today, the two and seven other graduates who had benefited from a nine months rigorous training by the Kiroche Foundation completed their mentorship. It was a program that encouraged them to embrace risks, innovate and model their businesses to meet international standards. That is Collins Majale, the CEO of... M the pioneer class of 2015 had six students who were equipped with lessons of leadership and responsibility. 
the students were attached to mentors who provided them with invaluable insights to aim higher, among them being Standard Group CEO Sam Sholei. We don't need to go to Harvard Business School to understand how to grow our economy. It's only by having many upcoming entrepreneurs supporting them so that we can grow our own economy. The biggest challenge that is facing the world today is young people have nothing to do. And you have shown them that there are a lot of things that you can do if you are innovative and if you want to succeed. And for me, I think they inspired me the most. First and foremost, they are young. I think one of them is half my age. And she's earning, you know, she's raking in millions without any apology. Armed with their newly acquired knowledge, the young entrepreneurs will be required to be captains of the industry, following in the footsteps of the Kiroche Foundation. Uh, the next day I want to be the leading manufacturer in East Africa, which also we, has, we have already started supplying in Tanzania and Uganda. And we want also the hairdressers in the industry to be able to use the hair. Uh, I've been a small, uh, an SME, and uh, being an entrepreneur, of course, there are different challenges, and this is uh, ranging from uh, the different kind of uh, the different kind of uh, resources that we need to have in place for us to become uh, more equipped, better entrepreneurs. The academy is part of Kiroche's efforts to contribute towards addressing Kenya's unemployment crisis. Caroline B, KTN News. You're watching KTN Prime. Many thanks for staying with us. We'll take a quick commercial break when we return. Right, when we return, we'll be telling you about what will be Africa's tallest building. Today, President Uhuru Kenyatta has set the foundation for that. It will have 67 floors. So, Abhi, again, I will have all the details.